big news item still, right? So contested election not determined yet. Uh, as we speak now, Biden is pulling ahead in the electoral counts. So uh, let's talk about some of his policies. He wants to make an executive order that wants to undo a lot of Trump's policies in the past. He wants to create a coronavirus task force. Some people are talking about the possibility of another lockdown before he reopens the economy. What do you think all this is headed, Peter? How do you think the economy will change? Well, you're right. On the basis that uh, it continues and by and becomes the uh, real elected, uh, or at least 50 point something percent people in America will believe he's the legitimately elected uh, president. Uh, he certainly will have a completely different criteria uh, than the previous president Trump has. Uh, a lot will have to do with how he'll be able to implement it, depending on or not if the Democrats can somehow get control of the Senate as well. I think the Republican plan behind the scenes is to win the Georgia in at least one Senate race there, hold complete control away and then uh, watch the economy basically go in the tank over the next two years so that they can win back the House and eventually the presidency in 2024. However, if somehow the Democrats gain control of the Senate, uh, I believe they'll be able to implement a lot of stuff in the next two years that could make that very, very difficult for the Republicans. So one of the first things I think people have to do is have to see what the results of the Senate election is based on the fact that uh, Biden will start out as president. I do not believe he will uh, be able to make four years. Uh, I, I believe his health is gonna become a major, major issue if it isn't already, but to half the Americans. Uh, so I think it's gonna be as important to think what you think potentially President Harris thinks as well as the uh, President Biden. But there's no question that uh, most of the things that were implemented by Trump will be looked to be unwound by Biden or Harris, who was ever sitting there. And uh, that's going to, uh, I think, impact uh, the stock market, uh, but even the bond market more, because I think no matter which who is president, we are going to see snips of inflation again and stag inflation while the account economy weakens. We'll see a, a bump up in inflation because of all the money creation and that will just absolutely kill the bond market. So I actually, for the first time in decades, have turned bearish on our U.S. bond market and think probably have more potential loss in the bond market than we do in the U.S. stock market. So impact the markets how, Peter? In a good way or a bad way? Well, you know, this, the, the stock market is nothing what it was when I started 36 years ago. Back then, 90% of the trading was the general public. People bought it because they wanted to be part owner of a company. Now, in my opinion, the stock market has become a very sophisticated, highly technology driven casino uh, where 29 year old quants are trying to implement the latest mathematical equation to beat it. Others are using words and headlines to trade it. And now there's 13 million new Robin Hood traders who think sitting at home uh, over these last six months have given themselves a, a new profession where they won't have to work other than to hit some buttons and make money while high frequency traders are making billions of dollars off of their trades. Uh, so uh, eventually uh, markets will return to fundamentals. Uh, and there's no question now that uh, America is clearly at its most divisive period other than possibly the Civil War. Uh, both the economy and social and political situations have never been worse in my opinion. So eventually the stock market will be brought down towards the reality of Main Street rather than Main Street getting caught up with the stock market, in my opinion. So you don't think we have a V-shaped economy. What uh, what indicators are still lagging in your opinion, Peter? I'll just point out two things. The so third quarter GDP grew 33% on an annualized basis. So we're still not at pre-COVID levels, but it was a tremendous growth since the uh, second quarter. And also retail sales from the St. Louis Fed data came in and uh, retail sales have continued to rise despite a pandemic. But uh, clearly you're looking at other indicators as well that point to a drag in the economy. Well, we can just look at the same two you just mentioned, Dave. Uh, sure, we've had a rebound, but a rebound from where? And how many people participated in that rebound? And how many people are permanently out of the game? Uh, we know so many businesses, part of our, my main business now is dealing with small to mid-sized business owners across the United States. And in the last 60 days, they have expressed 
real concern about the viability to continue in the manner that they are. And it's taken trillions of dollars of stimulus money, which the, 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 the cocaine induced stock market will kind of look for again uh, for another stimulus package, which I think will be much more difficult to get across if the Republicans maintain control of the Senate. And we now need trillions of dollars printing but in money just to sustain an economy for a few more months. And uh, we're getting to the point where sustaining and servicing the debt here in the U.S., whether it's on the U.S. corporate level or on the personal level, is becoming unsustainable. So, and, and that obviously takes us to the alternative. And that's why I think when we do talk about gold, you'll see that there'll be another leg up in gold market be, and, and also alternatives like cryptocurrency what have you because people are going to continue to lose faith on the ability for the united states to service its debt levels so let's talk about gold now for capital appreciation now as i mentioned before last time we spoke uh, not too long ago in the summer you had allocated all your assets into gold 100 percent gold portfolio are you still in that allocation today well, you're right. In 2018, actually, in the summer, I made a decision. I left the general equity market all but one and went into overweighted and physical fully and, and owned mining shares and rode that to just under 2000. And then I sold mostly everything and have since uh, gone back into it. And in recent days, have stressed mining shares over physical bullion. Uh, while I believe physical bullion has another 20 to 25 percent higher because mining companies see most of an increased price go to their bottom line because things don't change much just because the price has changed. The opportunity to see a higher percentage return in mining shares uh, is much more likely uh, than you're going to see in the physical bullion. And if I can, you did an interview a few weeks ago. Uh, I called it and I posted it. And this is not a stroke, you know, I don't need to be on here. I'm appreciative I'm on here, but I'm not looking to get you happy. So you have me back by saying this, but it was, the ten, I called it the 10 best interviews I ever heard in 36 years. And the gentleman's name was David Caparrell, I believe, who used to be with Gold Corp. And uh, everything that was said in that interview, the questions you asked, and most importantly, the answers he gave, is exactly why you need to own bullion and mining shares. It was. I've literally used it in lieu of sharing with people why I think they should own gold. I say, watch this interview, and if you don't agree with it, then don't follow me because everything the gentleman said was spot on, in my opinion. Well, why do you think the uh, the miners will outperform the bullion? Well, let's give an example. Let's use two thousand dollars to make it easy. Say gold is two thousand and it goes to twenty five hundred. I believe that's twenty five percent, because almost all of that gain will go to the bottom line of the typical mining company. It won't cost them a lot more to get just because the price went up. You'll see that the earnings growth be bigger than 25%. So uh, if you're gonna believe gold's gonna go up, uh, then then you have to be at least evenly weighted, if not overweighted in the miners going forward, because now where the leverage of being a producer really comes into play. and. Uh, as also was pointed out in an interview, that the, the majors and, and significant producers have become much leaner. They've become better capitalized. They, they've, they've recognized not to get caught up in gold rushes and buy everything that they can in, in a moment's notice. So everything is almost like a, a, a near perfect storm uh, for gold mining companies at this point in time. Can you tell us a few companies that you like? Well, I'm very high on, on, on a Quebec gold rush that uh, I literally only discovered myself earlier this year by, uh, by by getting reinvested into a junior that I, I think I'm the largest shareholder or nearly uh, a company called Van Star Mining. And uh, it has a joint venture with uh, I Am Gold. Uh, but whether it's Amex Exploration, there's, there's three companies that I would just tell people, and again, I'm not here to tout it. I'm speaking my book, my own book, because I'm just talking my own investments. But the, the, the fastest one of the three that I think it will be taken over is Amex Exploration, AMX. I mean, just the phenomenal discoveries continue. The news today about the metallurgic being so great, uh, just going to have to be gobbled up. Uh, the, the next one, obviously, is Vanstar Mining, VSR. Just a, an incredibly uh, undervalued situation when you it's so rare in juniors to have both steak and sizzle. 
you normally have one or the other. But in this particular case, we have both. And then finally, a company that just made a major discovery hold just a few days ago. Uh, I think I'm in the top 10 of holders of it, uh, called Northern Superior Resources, SUP in Toronto. All three of them, I, I, I see them as takeover candidates in the next 12 to 24 months. Obviously why I have such large positions in them.